Hello and welcome to episode 45 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. This week we're excited to have back on the show as our special guest Ed Featherston. Ed is a vice president and principal architect at Cloud Technology Partners and in this week's show we will be talking about The White House has released a draft of its cloud computing strategy for public comment, which is entitled Cloud Smart, which will refocus the federal government's adoption efforts. The new strategy will update the Obama administration's Cloud First policy, which was established in 2010, to better reflect where agencies and technologies are today. Hi, Dave and Ed. A warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you all on the C-Suite show this week. And welcome back, Ed. It's great to have you back on the show. Thanks, Brad. It's great to be back to chatting with you and David. Always enjoy the conversation. Uh, it's great to have Ed on the show. It's great to be back. Thanks, Brad. Oh, you're both very welcome. Great to have you back. Another opening question uh, for this week's show would be, will this lead to more adoption by the U.S. government, in your opinion, guys? And I guess that should uh, firstly flick to you, David. God, I hope so. I mean, uh, back in uh, 2008, um, during the Obama administration, the CIO had a cloud first strategy and they, were, they did, did a great job evangelizing the cloud and this came up with the cloud definitions of public, private, community, uh, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. And we kind of got things off the ground and I thought the government was gonna be the big adopter of cloud-based systems. And while there's been some progress, uh, it's been a lot slower uh, than in the private sector. And I thought um, this may be one of those things where the government leads the private sector and that just wasn't the case. And so what I think they're doing right now is basically going from a cloud first to, you know, let's evaluate, you know, smart cloud. Let's look at each one of the um, uh, problem domains and trying to see which applications and systems, you know, are going to be viable for the cloud. So in essence, it's kind of cloud first light. But I do think that uh, what's missing in the federal uh, government's migration to the cloud computing is in essence excess funding because reality is we're going to have to cordy enough resources to, you know, get the money that's needed to get the consultants in place, the programmers in place, the cloud experts in place, you know, to take these hundreds of thousands of applications per agency. It's an absolutely immense, uh, complex set of things and systems that they're running and get portions of them over to the cloud in some sort of a stepwise manner. And even then, if you move very fast, you know, a 10 year to 15 year outlook, you know, is going to be incredibly fast going forward. So. I would like to see them make more progress or have some big acquisitions out on the street. One of the reasons I picked this story is I think the C-suites for the federal government, the the integrators out there, and there's thousands of them, are really trying to figure this out and where to actually invest their time and money. And so it'd be interesting to get Ed's perspective on this as well. No, no, and I fully agree. I mean, I had expected the government to be a lot further along in cloud than they are. Um, I actually was real happy with seeing this new document come out because I think it fits a lot with conversations that I've had with clients. And I know, David, I see you write about all the time about don't just go to the cloud for the sake of going to the cloud. Figure out why you're going to the cloud, what the workloads you're moving are, what the impact on those workloads is, and come up with a, a solid strategy on how that is going to work. I think one of the things you raised there is a really good point around it, it, there are thousands and thousands of applications in the government sitting there wait, that, that are potentials for moving. And just having an understanding of what those workloads are and what the impacts of moving those workloads are is a significant level of effort unto itself. And if you don't do it right, you're going to have failures, and those failures are going to make moving forward into the cloud even harder. Those first ones that go have to be successful if you're going to be able to go forward. Otherwise, the naysayers are going to immediately point at it and say, see, we told you, it's not going to work. Um, and since most of these systems also tend to be much older and legacy type applications, it becomes an even bigger challenge on making sure that the in-house skill sets and the people there are capable of dealing with the fundamental changes in how you do operations when you move things up into the cloud. So I think I think the points you made are very valid, and I hope this is a sign that things are going to start moving forward for the government a whole lot better. Yeah, I think it'll start moving forward as long as there's funding behind it. I mean, one of the things that bothered me about Cloud First is it put the onus on the CIOs and the various agencies 
you know, to go ahead and make the move and always pick cloud as the primary, uh, you know, way in which they're moving. But if the reality is that, you know, these folks are basically charged with the running the business, you know, running the IT within a very, you know, complex and diverse organization and also a huge organization. And if they don't have the funding or the outside support, it's going to be very difficult for them to make inroads and making things happen. One of the things I noticed around me, I mean, we're building more data centers and those aren't cloud data centers. Those are typically going to be government utilized data centers. And I think the reality is the government's only option of scaling is to buy more hardware and software. And the hardware and software you know, acquisition contracts are out there in droves. And I'd like to get them moving in a different direction and it's just going to be very difficult to get some of these folks off the dime to go ahead and make these make these investments and these acquisitions. I mean, I would urge the government to basically, you know, have some sort of a centralized authority where they could have, you know, very similar to a federal cloud business office where they could cut the deals with larger folks. I know GSA is in charge of some of that, but have best practices, the ability to get access to consultants and expertise. Uh, and work with various government agencies and start making this migration. The ability to centralize some of the best practices, some of the business processes that are localized and native to the government, you can't find any place else. So it wouldn't make sense, you know, for us to kind of do things in a, pu in a public sector version, you know, versus trying to recook everything out of the private sector, which in many cases is square peg round hole. I just see this as a large, complex issue that's going to need some. Uh, very innovative and very kind of very big jumps in order for them to get some uh, traction in the industry. And here we are, 2018, 10 years after you know the cloud first strategy kind of came out. So now's the time to make the move. Yeah, actually, I, I, the, the idea you bring up around a federal cloud business office, I think, makes a lot of sense. It's a thing that we're seeing happening in the private sector with a lot of large companies that have thousands of their own applications that they want to start migrating and they build a cloud business office for managing and controlling and focusing on the best practices and helping organizations migrate their applications out into the cloud. Um, it, it, a lot of it, and I've run into it just recently talking with some folks in the federal sector of that a lot of folks come in with the attitude of that moving to the cloud, the magic just happens. And, and I'm a big believer in the in one of my mantras is no technology negates the need for good design and planning. And cloud is definitely no exception to that fact. And when you're doing a mass migration on the scale of thousands of applications, if you don't do good design and planning, which takes time, money and resource, then you're going to ultimately fail and and it's not going to bode well for anybody. So let me let me give you a scenario. So X Y X Y uh, uh, Z uh, federal uh, agency, uh, you know, they're in charge of civilian services, things like that. They have a hundred thousand plus applications and databases that are under management, and they're looking to make. And they may have three percent of those in the cloud, and typically it's going to be SaaS based systems, things like that. So they're looking to make a massive migration to the cloud and basically picking 5,000 systems to migrate in the next, you know, couple, three years, you know, what would be the advice you'd give them as to, beyond some of the, the political things and the rules and regulations within the government, so what would the first three steps that you'd, you, you suggest that they do to, say, to get something in place and start getting some traction? Um, well, it, it, I, I mean, the, the first step is putting together some, some type of program management or like a cloud business office type of thing to start organizing this. To me, when you're talking that many applications and everything, it, it, part, part of what you need to do is basically a large app rationalization effort. You need to understand what you have for applications, what the stacks are what the capabilities are as far as migrating those applications. Are they capable of lifting and shifting and taking advantage of the cloud scalability? Do they require any type of refactoring or replatforming? You need to basically go through and categorize and identify, okay, where, where do these fall? Should they be lift and shift? Should they be refactored? Should they be replatformed? Should they be retired? I mean, a classic app rationalization exercise. Sometimes there are applications out there that you don't need anymore, but you don't realize it because they're just kind of sitting there. And part of what you have to understand is what are the interactions on these applications? Because when you start moving things to the cloud, and if you don't understand what all the connections are and what all the interactions are, 
There could be connect connectivity and and uh, throughput issues going back and forth between the existing on-prem and the ones that you migrate. So it, it's a large logistical complex problem that ne you need to sit down and look at it and figure out and categorize what do I have, what should go first, what should go next, and and as you as you keep going and learning from each one of those rollouts, you apply those learnings back and you keep cycling through as you continue moving out so that as you get into that process, it becomes a well-oiled machine and you just start rolling out the applications. So what would you advise them in terms of security concerns, you know, even for a civilian agency where they have lots of innocuous data that's not necessarily sensitive to national security, but you know, how would you suggest that they you know, step up to make the improved security along with moving into the cloud? Well, so security should always be a day zero consideration when they're when they're doing things. I, I've had conversations with clients where, where, you know, the question is, can I bring my security with me to the cloud? And my response back is, yes, you can, but do you want to? The cloud offers you lots of new types of capabilities as far as being able to protect and secure the data that's in your environment. But you actually, again, have to design and plan that and plan for it from the get-go. Uh, one of the worst mistakes, and I've seen some people make it of, they throw everything up into the cloud and say, I'll worry about security after the fact. And those are usually the ones that get hit right away because they haven't worried about it and they've left something wide open because it was easier to leave wide open than figure out what the right way was to do it to protect the information. Ultimately, it comes down to knowing what data needs to be protected and how it needs to be protected which comes back to you know know your data and data governance from that perspective. When you're migrating to the cloud, you're not just migrating all, all the applications, you're migrating all of the underlying data underneath. And if you don't understand what data it is you're migrating, it's gonna be awfully hard for you to protect it. So in other words, if we've assessed the applications you suggested, which I think is spot on, we've assessed the data that's attached to the applications, categorize the information, you know, come up with, uh, you know, common ways to look at the data, categorize it as to security parameters need to be placed around it, the governance parameters placed around it. That's kind of a hard problem to solve. It seems like moving into the cloud and leveraging the security around it, you know, would be something that's fairly easy to make happen. And so, but the hard thing is to really get the assessment done. So right. do you think the government should really just kind of focus on that for the next couple of years if they haven't done so already? Uh, it, I, I, I think it makes sense from that perspective because they probably have more data to worry about than just about any other organization that I can think of when you come down to it from a almost everything they have relates to personal data in one way, shape or another of most of the people that, that the government serves. So understanding that to me is, is a critical operation and is actually part of the conversation I was having with that federal agency I mentioned uh, the last couple of weeks of that the, the data is key in understanding what what they need to do when they're migrating their information to the cloud. So Brad, kind of question for you, I mean, kind of layer it back to Australia, and obviously they have a federal government smaller than the US, uh, but it seems like the systems that they're running are very similar to, in patterns, you know, and, and they seem to be moving quickly into the cloud. Um, of course, you could talk about the size and political infrastructure and complexity as being hindrance for the US stuff. But what do you think the secret sauce is that Australians do, that Australia is doing uh, the US can learn from? Oh, great question, Dave. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, I was gonna, gonna throw a question to Ed as well, so I'll save that for after. Look, I think um, Australia's got into bed with IBM, hasn't it, to invest, I think, almost a billion Australian dollars into its infrastructure with IBM. So I, I don't know what the secret source is with Australia. I mean, you and I have discussed this uh, several times about the, the fact that Australia just gets, gets on with it. I think it seems to observe what goes on globally with other organisations in the private uh, and public sector, and they just take action. And I think that's always been a credit to Australians uh, within the private and public sector from you know a number of different size organisations. They just seem to implement a lot quicker than than anywhere else. I mean, that may well be to a, a smaller economy and 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 the sort of that that principle that you and I often talk about is you know uh, the fa the faster you get to failure, the quicker you get to succeeding. So you know I think that is a case of the the falling over factor is a big deal for us. And I think we we want to 
make sure that we are innovative and leaders when it comes to that. And there's, there's a huge amount of things going on in Australia, which other countries are obviously looking at, <coughs> where we've learned from their mistakes already. Uh, like you've said, you know, we, we're quick learners, quick adopters and quick implementers. And I think that's where, where we particularly shine. So I'm not sure about secret sauce. Because um, I'm sure if we did have a secret sauce, we'd be bottling it and exporting it to China and the US and everywhere else. And it would probably, we'd probably call it "Good day, welcome to our secret sauce" or something. Um, but anyway, I digress. But no, I wanted to talk about this um, cloud-first strategy because you know it's taken eight years to get from the cloud-first to cloud-smart. You know, why do you think it's taken eight years? Because those eight years in cloud computing terms is huge, considering you know 2008 was really the the, the sort of, I wouldn't say the infancy of cloud computing, but it certainly was something where the, the terminology was adopted, cloud computing around 2008. So why do you think it's taken eight years for, for us to get to a, a cloud smart adoption from the cloud first? I don't know whether to give that to Ed. I think I'll give that to Ed first, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ed. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, gee, that, that doesn't like asking the, the simple, easy question. Uh, quite, quite honestly, I think I think it's a, a classic case of, of that a lot of times our own political system can't get out of its own way um, kind of thing in that the people that would like to see it get done and are capable of making it get done have lots of roadblocks that end up getting put in front of them from a political level in order to deal with various other issues that are going on. I mean, one of the things I love reading all the time is, is a lot of the politicians and everything uh, coming up with all of these technology bills, and most of them admit that they, have, they struggle using email. Uh, anybody struggling using email nowadays should not be writing a bill on funding technology <laughs> because they obviously need a, a remedial course in, in what's going on in the technology so that they understand what they're writing about. And that I, I've also seen be a problem at, at below the federal level, at the state level lots of times, where I will see technology RFPs get written that just quote a raw number of funding of, we want to do this for X number of dollars, and there's no connection between what the requirements were and what the dollar amount was. It was just somebody said, yeah, that sounds like the right dollar amount, and this is what I want go make the magic happen. And there's no connection in reality on it. And that slows the process down as well because that, then you're going through cycles and cycles of change order and corrections and stuff. So they, it, my, my personal view is, is that a lot of the problem here in the US is that we can't get out of our own way from a government perspective. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I agree with everything Ed said. I think the big thing is funding. Um, we uh, want to do cloud first, but give people no money to actually make it happen. And so unless that happens and it's sponsored by somebody and has lots of cash to lubricate the migrations, uh, it's just not going to happen. And I think the cloud smart thing is fine. And I think that you know we have a better technology than we had 10 years ago. And chances are we're going to have more success in the cloud if we start making the move. But there has to be some under lying infrastructure support within the uh, the federal government, whether it's a cloud business office, center of excellence or something like that, where you can centralize the deployment of cloud-based platforms. And these things are popping up, by the way, the GSA is working on aspects of this. And, you know, certainly uh, CloudRAMP, which is a government, which is a government certification program that's run by uh, the government as well. And we're seeing aspects of this, but I think it's just going to take a big hunk of cash uh, to kind of make this make this move. And the reality is you're going to save huge amounts of money on the back end that's going to justify the spending of a big hunk of cash. But the reality is people don't want to spend big hunk of cash. They just want to live with the budgets they had last year and live with the budgets they had the year before and keep moving forward. And that's not going to make it when you're maintaining or changing systemically the, the in essence what IT computing is. So yeah. Um, it, yeah, I, th I think you hit, hit on one of the other ones uh, of the, just the cultural shift internally for all of the organizations to shift into a cloud mindset. <clears throat> it, you know, even with the funding, if you can't get the mindset to shift to that new model, people are, you know, this is the way we've always done it. We'll keep doing it this way. And, and uh, I mean, government is probably one of the biggest bastions of that type of attitude. And so it, it, without the money and without a big cultural change of understanding, this is fundamentally different than the way we used to do things. But in the long term, it's going to be better, but you have to get there first. 
Yeah, I am seeing though pockets of innovation and aggressive innovation in the government. Uh, so I'm seeing government employees that are motivated to move in this direction and understand it, what benefits it's able to bring. Uh, so I'm not sure that all, I'm sure the, a lot of the agencies will have to go through some cultural changes, but a lot of agencies focused on technology understand what the target is and are ready to make the move. And I think right. the government needs to capitalize on that or else they're going to go do something else. Right. And those would be the ideal ones to take the first moves because those are the guys that want to succeed. And, you know, like you said, it comes back to they just need the funding to make the magic happen. Yeah, they need to build an elite team of uh, cloud uh, cloud migration specialists set up a mix of government integrators, government employees, you know, just grab them from the different agencies and have thousands of them able to deploy themselves to each government through right. repeating processes right. oh, 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 yeah. applications. Yeah, and almost like cl cloud SWAT teams of here, here's our specialist trained in it, we'll help you get through the first couple and then, you know, you go and build your own teams and do the same thing and just grow virally. Yeah. Anyway, back to you, Brad. We're, we're about to talk about armored SUVs for the cloud spot SWAT team. So <laughs> hey, excellent. I was going to say some cloud assassins, like cloud ninjas, like just, you know, just somewhere <laughs> ho hovering up in the atmospherics ready to, to jump on the next project. But I'm not, you know, we've, we'll, we'll just digress into something ridiculous. So look, guys, great show. Thoroughly enjoyed this week's C-Suite show. Thanks, Ed, for coming back on the show. Awesome as always. Thanks for inviting me. I always enjoy talking with you guys. Awesome. And thanks, Dave. Thanks for joining us this week. It's always great having Ed on. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. You can get Ed on Twitter, which is at E. Featherston. Uh, David's on Twitter at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. Uh, as I usually say, links are down below in the description box. Check it out. You can reach out to us all on the social media as well, Facebook, Instagram, and all that sort of jazz. Um, Ed's with us for all three shows this week. So we've done Australia, done the C-Suites. We're about to do the training show. Yes, yeah, so stay tuned. And thanks for watching. Until next week.